Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the module that I have mounted on my breadboard. Now, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, I made a video about the Raspberry Pi Pico mounted on a Proto board, which is made for it. It's basically the same module, has the same microcontroller, the RP2040, except the Raspberry Pi Pico W has support for Wi Fi. You can see the Wi Fi module here. Now, if you look at the pinout, you can see it has 40 pins and they're labeled 1 to 40 around the perimeter. It also has GPIO labels and both of those will be referenced in code. Now the purpose of this video is to get the RP2040W to connect to your Wi-Fi. It'll be very simple, there'll be no code, so if you're not into coding, it'll be very simple to do. So the first thing you have to do is go online and search for WebMite. Now WebMite is a code that you're going to load into the microcontroller. It's a basic interpreter, so go to the website Go to the download page and download WebMite and it will be a .uf2 file and you can put that file on your desktop. Now to load it into the microcontroller, we hold down the push button and as we're holding it down we plug in the USB connector and now it will look like a flash drive. So you take the uf2 file and you either drag and drop it or copy and paste it into the flash drive. It will load and then it will disappear and then it will be programmed into the microcontroller. Now once it's programmed into the microcontroller it's going to run and when it starts running and it's running properly you're going to see this LED start blinking on the very left hand corner of the of the module and once that's blinking that's that's the heartbeat you can see it blinking there now so you know it's it's running properly so if that LED either uh, goes out completely or freezes, stays on solid, there's a problem. But if it's blinking, that's its heartbeat, that means it's running okay. So now we have WebMite running on the RP2040. Okay, so now all you need to do is type in five lines at the command prompt using TerraTerm, and that will enable the Pico W to connect to your Wi Fi. So here are the five lines. Now, the first line right here that creates two string variables one is called SSID, the other one is called password. So this is where you enter your SSID, and this is where you enter your password. Now you run these three lines. Now after you run these three lines, type in this line. And after you type in this line, the Pico W will try to connect to your Wi-Fi. And when it does, your Wi-Fi will send back an IP address using DHCP. Now write down that IP address, remember it. And then type in the next line, option telnet console on. So now we could gain access to the Pico W using Telnet over Wi-Fi, so we don't need to plug into the USB connector, so it'll be it'll be totally wireless. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my Pico W. And here are my settings, my serial port settings. So now I, I assume that you typed in the first three lines that contained your SSID and password. So now I'm going to type in the fourth line which will make it connect up to my Wi-Fi. So I'll run that now. So now it's trying to connect to my Wi-Fi. And when it does, it's going to send back an IP address. So there's my IP address. So that worked out okay. So I'll type the last line. That's will enable Telnet. So I'll do that now. Type that line. So now it's connected to Wi-Fi. So now we're all set. Now we can gain access to our Pico W using Telnet over Wi-Fi. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running my computer again. So this time we're going to try to connect to the Pico W through Wi-Fi. So if I go File, New Connection, I'm selecting TCP IP. There's my IP address. Now I cycled my router and it gave me a new IP address, .64. Services Telnet. TCP port 23, that's Telnet, so I'll go OK, hit Enter, and I'm in. So we'll try some commands. I'll go print 260. We'll try some math. There's some math. We'll try some strings. We'll print hello. Prints hello. Now the firmware is, is broken up into three blocks. We have commands, we have functions, and we have options. So I list the commands that are available, 135 of them. And if you go into the documentation, there's a write-up in each one. 
So we'll have a list of the functions that are available. Here's all our functions. Have a look at the memory, how much memory we got. Since there's no programs running, it's all free. So next we're going to have a look at the temperature sensor that's on board the RP2040. So if I go print, go pin, and go temp, there's our temperature, 20 degrees. So that's a few examples how we could use commands on the RP2040. Now these are just commands. There's, there's no programming. To get into programming, you have to uh, type edit. That gets into your editor. So we're just we're just running commands, no code. So there's an example of what we could do with a Pico W. Okay, if you want to configure your Pico W board, you don't have to plug it into a breadboard like I'm doing here. You don't even have to solder on the header pins. All you need is a USB cable and the Pico board. Just plug it in, configure it, play around. I plugged mine into a breadboard because I wanted to do some experimentation. I hooked up an LED to one of the GPIO pins. I got a pot hooked up to 3.3 volts, so I got 0 to 3.3 volts going into the ADC. I have a LoRa radio module hooked up to the serial port so I could send data into LoRa radio module. And next I'm going to put a battery on here, I'm going to go battery powered so I could, I could take this and I could put it anywhere in the house. So next I'll, I'll show you the schematic diagram of this setup here of my breadboard in case you want to do the same thing. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the layout that I had on my breadboard. So here's the Pico W. And here's my battery, it's a 3.3 volt battery, and it's fed up to VSYS through a diode, so you don't back feed into the battery, so you could have the USB connector and the battery on at the same time. I have an LED on GP5, that's pin 7, with a 330 ohm current limiting resistor. The pot goes across 3.3 volts to analog ground, which is pin 33, and the wiper is connected up to GP26, that's pin 31, that's the ADC. And the output, serial output, GP12, that's pin 16, that's TX0, that goes into the RX of the LoRa radio module. Uh, mode 0 and 1 are grounded, and VCC is, is getting it from 3.3 volts, and there's our common ground. So that's basically the schematic there, if you want to play around with the same thing that I'm doing. Pretty simple uh, schematic that you could set up yourself. Okay, any device that's capable of Wi-Fi can connect to the Pico W. So I have my cell phone, and I'm running an app. It's a Wi-Fi serial terminal. So I'll connect, and there it's connected to the Pico W. And I have a bunch of macro buttons you see on the bottom. So this is the list of my commands. Here's my list, list of functions, IP address, shows the IP address, memory, how much memory is free, flash, that's for storage of programs, slot 123 is available. I have a LoRa radio, I'll send hello world, you can hear it. Do it again. I have an LED on my board, I can turn the LED on. It's right here, LED is on, you can see it. LED off, on, off. ADC, that's this pot. So go ADC, 3.3 volts. I'll turn it about half, ADC. 2.03 volts, turn it all the way down, ADC, 0 0.01, I'll go back up to 3.3. Next is the temperature, 26.5 degrees. So that's an example that we could use other devices to gain access to the Pico W. Okay, so that was my little primer on how to get the Pico W up and running pretty quickly, just using the command line. I didn't want to get into uh, any programming because I didn't know how uh, much interest there would be. So if you're a beginner, if you're just uh, beginning in electronics, it's pretty easy. You could do a lot just with the command line.